Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this special session of the student pro of the uh, history seminar series that we call the Student Professor Returns uh, on a subject that um, I know you're all intensely interested in, namely me. <laughs> um, the uh, I, I planned this mostly as a way of being able to talk to the university community a bit about my experience uh, last year as a full-time student. At, uh, I was on leave from uh, uh, my, my time here at Nipissing to uh, attend Wycliffe College, one of the constituent colleges of the Toronto School of Theology at the University of Toronto, um, uh, for a, in the Master of Divinity program for reasons that I, for this audience at least, are I think now evident. Um, so uh, I've I got together a little panel here of uh, friends who uh, have different angles from which they'll approach this question of what it is like to be you know, a professor going back to school and what it's like to be a historian studying theology. Um, uh, Nathan Colborn, who is uh, in the Department of Religion and Cultures and was actually, I think, one of the first uh, colleague friends that I made when we both first arrived here 10 years ago over 10 years ago. Um, Elise Blom-Gagne, MA student in our Department of History, who will uh, address things from the student perspective. And Nathan Kozik-Skanich from my colleague in the Department of History, who will, who will take the historian's perspective. So we'll just see where this all goes. And uh, we'll have each of the um, panelists will uh, interview me for, I don't know, about 10 minutes. And then uh, we'll have a kind of uh, free for all among the panelists, and I think I don't think we need to be terribly formal in this setting about uh, questions from the audience. So people can just join in, you know, at that point when they feel like it. So I thought we'd start with uh, with Elise uh, asking from the student sure. mm -hmm. perspective. All right. Um, well, you mentioned previously that you had lived in residence um, during your time there. I'm just curious what that was like, having been a professor at Northern University, having lived on your own, presumably, for many years, and then having to kind of transition back in that kind of resident mindset where there are, I'm assuming, rules and different kind of restrictions that you have to live by. Mm -hmm. uh, what did that feel like? Well, um, and I would also say that even though I did live in residence as a student, I never lived in the type of residence that Wycliffe is, which is a traditional dorm residence where you know the, you don't cook your own meals. The, there, I mean, there are kitchens, but there's a dining, there's a meal plan that's part of the package. You eat in the dining hall. Um, most of the rooms are are you know on the small side, and it is a building built in 1891. So uh, and has n has not had you know, substantial retrofit in quite a long time. So it had all of the, the features of living in an older building. Um, I think one thing that made it a little different than it would have been as an undergraduate is that most students at Wycliffe are, um, at, those living in the residence are generally uh, people who have already have an undergraduate degree. So they're, if they're not students of Wycliffe College itself, they are students uh, who, um, uh, a grad degree. So it's not quite like moving in with first year students who are right out of high school. Um, basically, I love it. Um, I, uh, right from the time I went there, I thought, a whole year where I don't have to cook a single meal, um, the food will have to be pretty bad not to make this worthwhile. And the food was actually, in my opinion, pretty good. Um, they're very lucky that year, and uh, the um, the rooms. I, I was I was also very lucky in the sort of room that I got because the residence dawn, knowing that I was one of the more mature students, um, <laughs> said that oh well, well we'll sort of put you in this area that's a bit quieter, and which was just fine with me. So I had you know neighbors who were also you know more mature. Um, and uh, the room that I got actually was kind of like two rooms. It had sort of a little room at the a, a main larger area, and then there actually was this other room that you accessed through a door, and I just put the bed in there. So that was my, I kind of had a bedroom and a living room 
in my residence room. And you know, it was in the basement, and it was it was hot. The, the, the building was generally overheated, whether it was summer or winter. Um, but I I really liked it. I really liked getting up in the morning and getting dressed and going to breakfast and being able to just go to classes in the same building. You know, everything was there. And the residence community is also quite wonderful um, because you meet not only other students in the in the Wycliffe College programs, but these graduate students who come from other other disciplines too. So it was a it was a really good community. Yeah. All right, uh, so my second question to you is, as a professor yourself, did you find that your relationship with your professors might have been different from, um, say, students who were, perhaps they'd gone through their undergrad, but they were just um, transitioning from undergrad directly to uh, their master's? Uh, I guess I'd, I'd probably say yes and no. Um, obviously, uh, professors will perceive you as uh, the person that you are. So, I mean, they knew who I was. I didn't find that it meant they treated me any differently. Um, I think that maybe, and also you pretty much just have to ask them, but my, my feeling for myself was that uh, I, I was very conscious of the fact that I didn't want to come across as the obnoxious student who said, well, actually, I'm a professor myself. And because, I mean, I, it would have been stupid of me to do that because I was studying a different discipline. But there always is a feeling of, you know, I, I, was, I was conscious of what, the, of what the professor was doing as a professor and conscious that I did not want to get in the way of that. Mm -hmm. So I tended, to, you know, I participated in classes and, and did so constructively, I hope. But I, tr I tried to sort of downplay the, the academic background mm -hmm. uh, because I, I just, as I said, I didn't want to get in the way of the, of, of the instructor. And there was, you know, there was one um, sort of uh, anecdote I can tell about that at one point that, that uh, where I, I found myself being very conscious of that. So. Mm -hmm. All right, and having been out of school, um, out, out of the student role, for um, several years and having been a teacher, how, what was it like transitioning back into that kind of student mindset? Mm. Well, that's a good question because although I had been a, of course I'd been a doctoral student uh, for a long time, but it had been probably 20 years since I had um, followed this kind, the kind of coursework structure that the M. Div at Wycliffe follows. You know, the last time I was a full-time student, I was doing a, th a doctoral thesis. So it had been a long time since I was going to classes, preparing assignments on short deadlines, all of that kind of stuff. Um, in one way, I would say it felt surprisingly natural. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because I also, I also had a lot of years of undergraduate education. I did two undergraduate degrees. Um, so I think that those the, the kind of mental pathways that, that are there when you become accustomed to the life of a student, um, like they're laid down, right? And you may not be using them, but they're still there. So, st like, I, I, I remember, it's kind of the first day of class, and thinking, well, here we are, it's time to go to class. And it was just like, flip the switch back on, and I mean, okay, the engine's maybe a little rusty, but it got going pretty quickly. And it just felt completely natural to be going around to class. And I mean, I enjoyed being a student, right, when I was an undergrad student. So uh, to me, it was quite, quite pleasurable, actually. Um, what I did discover, though, was that uh, the bad habits that I had as a student and that I have continued to retain in some form were very much there mm -hmm. as in this full-time student uh, identity. So, um, you know, I did, I did find, I have to say, uh, I did find myself doing things that would irritate me if my students did them. <laughs> so, um, you know, I often prepared things uh, quite close to the deadline date. Um, uh, there were times when I had stuff that was late. Um, there were, um, 
you know, I sometimes did some assignments without really reading the instructions completely. And, I, and, and, what the, and the, 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 the great revelation of this was to realize this is how easy it is. Like this is, I, I see how easy it is to do these things because I saw the reasons for them, the reasons why you might not want to find out that the assignment actually called for you to do something different than what you really wanted to do. Or uh, the reasons why the, 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 uh, the, you know, your managing time pressures is different. And I mean, I manage time pressures as a professor too. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I would say it gave me um, a renewed understanding of the, of the pressures that full-time undergrad students deal with. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that actually kind of links really well into my next question, which is uh, in a discussion that I had very early in the year, I think it was after one of the first classes that I TA for you, um, you mentioned that we hadn't quite gotten as much out of one of the readings as you had wanted to, and that you were um, going to definitely return to it the next class because you had been frustrated this past year when professors would assign a reading and then not cover it as much as you expected they would, right? Because you had done all this work, and then it had just kind of gone by the wayside. Um, and I'm just wondering if there are any other where kind this of... where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm just wondering if there are any other kind of revelations similar to that uh -huh. on um, kind of student mm -hmm. undergraduate perspective mm -hmm. that you kind of shifted mm -hmm. back towards mm -hmm. or... Um, that, that, that was probably the biggest one, um, because I really, as Elise was just saying, I really grasped the student's frustration where it felt like time put into a piece of work was in some sense wasted when you had a lot of other stuff to do you could have been devoting that time to, and then the instructor does not really deal with it in the class. And the one thing I would say is that now being back on this side of the table, it's shocking to see how easy it is to slip into that, too. And it's mostly a matter of trying to pack too much into a class and and the discussion of the text being pushed until there isn't enough time left to deal with it and then so I mean I, I guess the, one of the big revelations is just how easy it is to fall into all of these things right you know the the, the good I want to do I do not do and the evil I, I do not want to do is what I do um, but the um, in terms of other such revelations um, uh, I would say I, I saw, um, I think I, I, I got a, a, a new respect also for teaching assistants, mm -hmm. for people, I mean, not, not quite in the role that they have here at Nipissing, but more at a larger university where, a, where a, a, a doctoral student will be responsible for actually teaching a section of a course. Because I saw how, you know, um, being, a student in the section, I mean, at, at, at Wycliffe, most of the teaching assistants are not that involved in the, the teaching because the classes are generally quite small. But I saw how uh, just, just the sheer amount of um, work that the teaching assistant had put into really trying to guide discussion on an area that they was not really their own area of expertise. And it's interesting that I perceived that more as a student in the class than I would have necessarily as a professor supervising the student. Uh, that's, that's another one I'll mm -hmm. say.